Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today I come to you with a bit of an odd question. What is it that differentiates a short film from a feature-length film? In the past, I would have said strictly runtime, but I've been kind of starting to rethink that, and nothing has made me question that more than the watch that I had just last night of the 2020 movie that was just released on Shudder, An Unquiet Grave. Written and directed by Terrence Cray and also written by Christine Nyland, this movie stars two and only two people. Christine Nyland playing Ava and Jacob Ware playing Jamie. And Ava and Jamie are both mourning the loss of somebody. And we come to find out that the person that they are mourning is her twin sister and his wife, respectively. And through their interaction, we get the notion that they are suffering an immense amount of pain from their loss, as well as also cooking something up hatching a scheme or a plan that has not yet fully been revealed in the plot line and kind of gets unpacked slowly. Suffice it to say, they plan on working together from this point forward to find a way to communicate with the dead. Now, I want to be very clear on two things right up front here. First of which is, this is a bit of an odd movie. The second is, I liked it a fair bit. I'm not going to say that I loved it and I'm going to be screaming from the rooftops that everybody in the world should be watching this, but I did enjoy it way more than I thought I would, and it had a lot going against it. Circling back around to that first point that this is a bit of an odd movie, and also circling back around to that point that I was making about a short film and its runtime, what makes it happen, and so forth. Because this movie clocks in at an hour and 15 minutes, which was way too long for a proper short film. It certainly wouldn't meet the criteria on any festival circuit, let's just put it that way. But at the same time, for a feature-length motion picture, it's rather brief. And here's the most odd thing about it, is as I was watching it, it didn't really feel like an hour and 15 minutes. It felt shorter than that. And I think one of the big reasons for that is kind of what made me think of the notion that maybe even at an hour and 15 minutes, this could be, in my mind, in my estimation, more of a short film than a feature length. Because it doesn't take this single individual concept, which is kind of interesting, to be perfectly honest. I was pretty captured by it. And it doesn't really build a world around it. It doesn't build characters around it. It doesn't bring everything to life in a big grand way with overarching plots and character motivations and conflicts and so on and so forth. There's not a whole lot there except the concept. And that's one of the big differentiations in my mind between a short film and a feature length. A short film can get away with just having a concept, executing it, and rolling credits, and everything is perfectly fine as long as they executed that one thing well. A feature-length movie typically will need to actually bring that concept into a grander world and build things around it. And for this movie, it didn't really do that. This stuck with its two principal characters, or at the very least the two principal actors, and nobody else was really involved in this movie. And they didn't really bring anything out from the concept on an external level. Instead, what this movie did was just take a laser line look at this concept and then viewed it from every angle possible. This was something that really took a magnifying glass on a what if situation and brought it to life in a big grand way. And I really do have to give some major props to the two lead actors or the two actors, Jacob Ware and Christine Nyland, because this was a heavy lift. I mean, even at an hour and 15 minutes and having a short feature length movie, they still had a lot of screen time to carry on their shoulders alone. And I would say that they pulled it off fairly well. The chemistry and the interaction that they had with one another, especially as they're going down this kind of really dark road, was interesting and believable. Again, I don't want to oversell this. I don't want to market this as Academy Award winning performances. They are not. But they are a lot better than I expected. And for something that was such a heavy lift and such a big ask to put on the shoulders of two actors, I think the fact that they pulled it off remarkably well is worth mentioning. And that wasn't the only thing surprising about this movie. This actually managed to have a good creepy atmosphere to it. It certainly built it towards the end, as well as a few really startling moments. If I had to come up with the biggest complaint I can put on the table, I would say that there were unspoken elements of the plot that could have been filled in a lot better. There is something to be said for not having to spell everything out and letting the audience draw conclusions 
with context of how A got to D. We can kind of infer through character dialogue and through situations and so forth what B and C might have been and, you know, let our imaginations run through with that. However, I, it takes a little bit more to go from A to G. You know, we need a little bit more context. We need a little bit more explanation. And I don't know how this movie could have done that without bringing in other characters. And although that would have been interesting and it would have built the world around this, I think that in some way it kind of would have taken away from the charm of the film itself. So it kind of runs into a little bit damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, but even so, there were gaps in the plot, in the characters, and in the story that I really do wish had been fleshed out a little bit better, and it would have eked out that runtime into more of a proper traditional at the minimum hour and a half runtime of a decent horror film. And at this point, I'm going to refrain from giving a full blanket recommendation, but only because I really do think this movie is going to be a bit slow for some audiences. Having two characters on screen the entire runtime and being so dialogue heavy is going to make this drag on a bit and lose the attention span of somebody that wants to enter into a film and just have a good old splatterfest fun time. This is not the movie for you. However, if you're willing to watch something that is a very kind of small, an intimate slow burn with a minimal cast and some good creepy moments that is willing to take its time and fully explore this concept and only this concept then I do absolutely recommend the movie An Unquiet Grave. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you on my next review. Remember next time you want to watch a horror movie first make sure that it's good and rotted.